How are we doing today, everybody? It's Watch Display here. Thank you for joining me, and please give me a follow over at Instagram on at Watch Display. And if you like the video or any of my other videos, please give me a like and subscribe. Wrist shot today I have on the 16618 solid gold five digit Submariner. Great daily watch, less heavy. Um, Check out the video I did of this. But today, we have a very rare vintage Cartier tank. And this one is from the 70s. So it's got a really nice gold plaque case. So what does that mean? It means it's like it's basically rolled gold or vermeil. So underneath the gold is solid sterling silver. And they layer several layers of gold on top of that so it will last a lot longer than standard plating let's wipe and wipe off my fingerprints okay so what's awesome about this watch well one it's a true jumbo and anybody that knows cartier they will know that most of all the vintage tanks are very 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 small especially for today's standards so this one was made in the 70s for a very small amount of years and what's really cool about this one is it's even, you might have seen a few of these on in the, either Instagram or even being sold, but most of those are the re less rare variants. This is the rarest of all the variants. It is considered the reference 15716. And what makes this more rare than the other variants is that it has a couple kind of upgrades I would call it on the actual watch. So let's start off with those upgrades and then we kind of go over the entire watch. So the ones that you will see that are not 15716s do not have this solid back with the four screws and they don't have as many um, there's not like true markings on the back of the case like this one. They might just say like Cartier kind of big it's not very deep uh, and you'll see this one still has a lot of the original brushed finishing which is also very rare because usually these are really really beat up and a lot of this you can see like see those discoloration I can get a lot of that off that's actually where the gold has worn down a little bit and there's uh, some tarnish building up on top of that so that's actually still kind of some gold around there I just would rather not polish it so that's the first difference the second difference is this very large spinel um, crown and you'll see it's very, very elongated. The other variants did not have it this long. You'll see that it's not nearly as long. It still ha has the, the spinel there, the sapphire, but it's not nearly as long. And what's really cool too, and another thing you won't see, if you notice, that crown is slightly, ever so slightly recessed. The other variants are actually just kind of sitting out. It's not like that, obviously, because they don't. it doesn't have that recessed area, but um, I could see where it could easily be knocked off because it's kind of just the case is straight where that kind of curves in. So that's another rarity um, for this variant. And they say that the construction is better on this one. I, I cannot testify that because I've not got the less uh, rare variants in my hands. So I, I don't really want to state that, but I will state these. Um, upgrades they would call them or the the reason why they think that it's that it's a better or more rare variant and so each of the boutiques Cartier boutiques where all these different references came from they kind of had their own reference so the 15716 was only made in New York which was kind of like the um, boutique at that point so this one was made in New York and they were only made for for like I think it was either two or three years total so that's another thing that makes it very rare. And you'll see the crystal is actually ever so slightly curved. You're gonna see a little bit of distortions on the edges of the crystal. Um, they do have some, there is some small uh, chipped areas in the crystal, but the crystal is still actually still solid through. There's no cracks or anything like that. So I'll probably just leave it because uh, you'll see the crystal actually curves down with the case. So that's the kind of overall quick look at the watch. And what's cool about it is that it measures almost 38 millimeters long. So this whole area is 30 
7.5 millimeters. I believe it's 24 across, not including the crown. So it definitely wears a lot better. I'll put it on really quick. Let me take off the Submariner. Properly put it down. Got to be careful with gold, gold watches. And we'll put this on for a 6.75 inch wrist. And this is not the original Cartier strap. This is a 18 millimeter NOS Time Vintage um, Blue Berenia strap. It's actually some some sites list this as a 17 millimeter and some sites list this as an 18 millimeter. It's actually, I measured it, it's actually 17.5. So this is an 18 millimeter strap. You can see it's slightly squeezed on there. It's not ruining the strap or anything like that, but it's ever so slightly over 17 millimeters. Um, I've got some straps coming in that are more true to the original straps. Most of these came on black authentic, uh, authentic genuine lizard straps or uh, gator. Actually, it was crocodile. So I, I have a few of those coming in in the 17 millimeter size. But this is a, I thought this looks really nice with the with the blue and it's just very thin tapered strap and tapers down to 16 millimeters Cartier style buckle. Um, but it's a really really nice example. So you can see even on a 6.75 inch wrist, it's still get it has some nice presence to it. Is it small? Yeah, I mean when you compare it to a sports watch of course it's small but this is not a sports watch this is more of a dress watch but you can see it still takes up a lot of wrist um, real estate it still it wears really large uh, for its sizes I was really surprised so it is a manual wind caliber so when you open it up it's definitely manual wind when because I did unscrew these screws to check it all out when I first got it to make sure it was actually 100% of 15716 and it indeed is but these dials were painted lacquered so this actually originally was white a white dial and now it's kind of this kind of creamed patina uh, just from normal aging and you're not going to be able to pick it up on the camera but it's actually a spider dial so there's just like these small little minute crackings across the dial which I think just make it look beautiful and it's a really cool watch I think it's a a great watch for somebody that wants Cartier, they want vintage, they want the old school Cartier where they're not like making all the models super large. Because like now if you want the Cartier tank, in order to get the tank you have to get, and you if you want it automatic, you have to get the large, or the XL I mean, you have to get the XL. That's a pretty large tank and then it also has a date function and to me I personally don't want a date function on the Cartier. I like it just simple and clean. And some people get these in quartz, which is okay also, but me, I like the manual wine caliber. This this watch is only 5.5 millimeters thick, so it's super thin. Well, it lays flat on the wrist really nicely. Uh, it's a very nice wearing watch. And hopefully I keep it. If I do end up selling it, it will be definitely a nice pickup for somebody else it's because it's a rare one and like I said if you see one of these stepped case Cartier tanks online check for the elongated crown and also check for the four screw case back that's right there where you'll know if it's not the 15716 and you shouldn't pay as much for those because they're not nearly as rare and you don't want to I mean, technically they look the same at a glance, but I do like the recessed crown. Um, I do have a 22 month year old daughter, so um, I'm not like outside throwing frisbee or anything or ball with that, but still it's, it's, it definitely does protect the crown a little bit more, especially on this one since it's elongated. It's a great watch, and I think it's a great way to get a Cartier, get gold without being like truly just like thin gold plating and to get a manual on caliber and to get a little bit more wrist presence versus the standard uh, tanks. So there we go. Thank you so much for joining me and please give me a follow on Instagram at watch display and let me know in the comments what you think of this watch. I think it's a very classy watch and I've even worn this like more casually. Um, I think that's where like you can play around with these straps. Like this strap is a little bit more casual versus putting it on the gator or whatnot. If I was to put this on like a tan Berenia strap, which I should do soon, I have one. Um, you'll see this Nas Time Vintage strap is really, really nice. I took out the quick release spring bars because it will not fit 
this case since it does need to be squeezed in there a little bit it will not fit that the spring bars are like literally that 17.5 when they're pushed all the way in so it won't go on there properly so I had to take the spring bars out but this is a Nostheim vintage strap I would look at their website uh, this buckle did not come on the strap either they come with a very very nice uh, buckle it's machined nicely and has a nice little chamfer on each side but there's a strap really nice tight thick stitching but thanks for checking me out